Well, Happy New Year to you all, and welcome to worship at Parkminster on this New Year's Day. This community of faith is made sacred by generations of tears, laughter, silence, and song. And may we open ourselves to the presence of the Divine, the Holy One, as we gather to worship. And so we begin our time of worship by lighting our Christ candle. And the one in our sanctuary is wrapped symbolically from week to week in the diverse colors of human flesh. The presence of the divine in the human is true in Jesus the Christ and true in all peoples. And so may the light of this Christ candle shine on the Christmas story deep in our hearts. And let us continue our time of gathering with our land acknowledgement and statement of welcome. Welcome to Park Minster. Acknowledgement and our statement of welcome. We begin our service with gratitude and respect as we remember together that this land, this planet is sacred. We are on holy ground. Earth is our only home and we are connected with all who live here. In every season, the earth offers us wisdom. We give thanks for the gift of clarity that winter brings. In the starkness of the leaf stripped landscape, we become aware of what we did not notice before. On bare branches, chickadees perch to feed on sumac berries, animal tracks leave stories in the snow. There is silence here too, an offer of deeply needed rest and summons for reflection. We lament that we have not honored our deep relationship with the earth. The climate crisis is one reason. The Haudenosaunee, Chinotin, and Anishinaabe have cared for and shared this land for millennia. Generations ago, they welcomed newcomers who entered into treaties with them. Treaties and trust have been broken. We all live with the consequences. We seek to live into right relationships with all Indigenous peoples on whose land we have settled. We commit to listening to and respecting their wisdom. In this moment of silence, we ponder what is asking for our attention? What is asking to be noticed and understood more clearly? Seeking true community, we welcome all who have no church home, need strength, and are seeking deep meaning. Welcome to those who have doubts or who do not believe. Welcome to those whose faith is sure and to those who believe, but who are asking large questions. Welcome to visitors and to familiar friends. Welcome to grandparents, to mothers, fathers, youth and children, couples and single people. Welcome. we hold one another in gratitude and pray that we will be strong together faithful together and loving together we seek blessing as we welcome the great gift of spirit in us through us and among us Isabel. 
Well, good morning once again. I'm just going to touch on some announcements that we have uh, for this morning. And for those who are online, you are noticing a little bit of choppiness. We are having a little bit of internet uh, streaming issues, so we apologize. Hopefully, we will stay connected. Uh, Reverend Joe and Melanie are both on holidays at the moment, but they will be back this coming Tuesday, January the 3rd. Uh, if you have an announcement you'd like to share this morning, you're welcome to come up to the lectern. And if you're with us online and you'd like to share an announcement, just type announcement in the chat and we'll see if we can let you share it that way this morning as well. Our service this morning is a celebration of the music and stories of Christmas and Epiphany, which is actually the story of the wise ones visiting Jesus and his family. So I hope that you're ready to sing. And for those in the, in the sanctuary this morning, I hope you're ready to sing nice and loud. Uh, and it's a really a lovely chance to sing some more of the beloved Christmas and Epiphany carols and hymns together today. For those... you so very much for your generosity. Any other announcements this morning? Well, seeing none, I'm going to get you to get ready to sing then. Our opening hymn this morning is in your Red Voices United hymnal. It is the first Noel, number 91. We'll sing verse 1 and then verses 3 to 5. And you're welcome to stand as you are in.
please be seated. As we hear music and stories from our faith tradition and listen for the word of God within it, let us prepare ourselves with prayer. Please join with me in our responsive prayer as seen on the screen. Let us pray. O star flinging God, whose light dances across eternity. but not yet present. Reconcile us to you and to ourselves that our living might be reconciling. Often we pray with news that is good, with hope that holds, with truth that transforms with a word tailored to this trail we're on. May the word of your grace guide our steps like the sun by day and the north star by night as we travel into the gift of this new year. Amen. The hymn that we're about to sing together was originally called The Friendly Beasts, and it probably originated in 12th century France. Sometimes it's known as the Donkey Carol or the Gift of the Animals. This song is unique in that each of the animals sings to the newborn Christ child in the first person, offering a gift to comfort him. We call it Jesus, our brother, in our Red Voices United hymn book, and we're going to stand and sing that together now. Number 56. Oh, hold on. Neil's not here. <laughs> Kenny, you're good. Yeah, I was just standing here. Talk about yourselves. How was your Christmas? What'd you get? Hope you had a nice New Year's. Would do me well to pay attention. Sorry, Neil, didn't realize. It's okay. The photocopy group. Oh, yay. Okay, we're on number, okay, number 56. I got you. Okay. We were just...
Please be seated. William Chatterton Dix was an insurance salesman. But at the age of 29, he was bedridden for many, many months due to a near fatal illness. During this trying time in his life, William began to write hymns. And the most memorable and well-loved of his songs is the Christmas carol, What Child Is This? which is sung to the melody of the traditional English folk song, Greensleeves. The lyrics of the carol are taken from a poem written by him called The Manger Throne. And so we will join together in singing What Child Is This? number 74 in the Red Voices United Hymnal. be seated and I'll turn things over to Isabel to share our scripture reading for this morning. The reading from our faith tradition this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 to 12. I am reading from the inclusive translation of the Bible. After Jesus birth which happened in Bethlehem of Judea during the reign of Herod, astrologers from the east arrived in Jerusalem and asked, where is the newborn ruler of the Jews? We observed his star at its rising and have come to pay homage. At this news, Herod became greatly disturbed as did all of Jerusalem. Summoning all the chief priests and religious scholars of the people, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem of Judea, they informed him. Here is what the prophet has written. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, 
are by no means least among the leaders of Judah, since from you will come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Herod called the astrologers aside and found out from them the exact time of the star's appearance. Then he sent them to Bethlehem after having instructed them, go and get detailed information about the child. When you have found him, report that to me so that I may go and offer homage too. After their audience with the ruler, they set out. The star which they had observed at its rising went ahead of them until it came to a standstill over the place where the child lay. They were overjoyed at seeing the star and upon entering the house found the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and paid homage. Then they opened their coffers and presented the child with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They were warned in a so they went back to their own country by another route. This is good news for all who need it. May we be blessed with a deep need for grace. So before I share my next reflection, I have a question for those of you gathered with me here in the sanctuary and for those on Zoom, maybe you could type in the chat. What is your favorite Christmas hymn? Just yell it out. Silent night. Silent night. Come all ye faithful. Anyone else? Joy to the world. We had that as that nice prelude this morning. In a bleak midwinter. We'll have that a little later, at least a piece of it. Anyone else? Still, 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 and oh, holy night. Lovely. Does anyone love Away in a Manger? Oh, I'm, I'm getting, getting some, some nods. nods. Good, because if you, you don't, don't, you're singing it next anyways. <laughs> and let me tell you all about it. Away in a Manger is also known as Luther's Cradle Hymn. For many years, it was thought that the song was written by Martin Luther and sung by him to his children. But it's now known that the song was written as a part of a collection for Martin Luther's 400th anniversary. And there's even speculation that the song was credited to Luther as a marketing gimmick to promote sales. The original form of the song was a two stanza verse. The actual author or writer of this song has been lost to history. The song with its simple and easy to remember verses has survived though. The song has roots in early 1880s America, and the, no, the first known publishing of the song was in May 1884 in the publication, The Myrtle. So we will join together in singing Away in a Manger, number 69 in Red Voices United.
be seated. Week after week, we are invited to share our gifts in a variety of ways. And the culmination of this giving helps us live out our ministry together here at Park Minster and make a difference in our community and in the world. In this Christmas season, we celebrate and experience God's generosity to us. We believe God gave is also at the core of our being. And we see this each and every week. And so let us bring our gifts before God with thanks. rise as you're able. Friends, thank you for your faith and the ways that it leads you to generously give of your time, talent, and treasure. Let us bless what we offer. Let us pray. Holy One, we give of ourselves for the same reason that you offer yourself, to touch lives, to care for those in need, 
to lift up the brokenhearted, and to bring comfort to those in need of care. May our giving bring hope, peace, joy, and love to all people. As we share and give, may your love be revealed in our lives, in the lives of others, and in the world. Amen. Please be seated. So I have another question for you this morning. For all you in the sanctuary, you didn't realize how interactive this was gonna be. I did learn online that someone loves angels we have heard on high. So we've talked a little bit about Christmas hymns that we'll often sing here in church, but there are plenty of Christmas songs and carols that one hears throughout this season. So now I want to move away from the hymns, and what is one of your favorite Christmas carols or songs? Anything goes. Last Christmas by George Michael. Thank you. Peace on Earth. Peace on Earth. Anyone else? No one's going to give me Jingle Bell Rock, rocking around the Christmas tree. All I want for Christmas is you. Can I tell you, mine's, all, what is it? I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. One year we're singing it, Neil. One year. Terry. Ah, fairy tale from New York by the Pogues. We should do a whole Christmas service on those. But, well, I'm going to talk about another one this morning. The song Good King Wenceslas, I'm sure many of you know that, Carol. Yeah, I'm seeing some nods. Well, believe it or not, it has no connection to Christmas whatsoever. The story told in the carol actually takes place on the day after Christmas, on December 26th. We call it Boxing Day, but it's also the Feast of St. Stephen. Written in 1853 by the Reverend John Mason Neal, they were inspired by the life history of Wenceslas I, who was the Duke of Bohemia, now the Czech Republic, from 1921, or sorry, from 921 until his assassination in 935. Following his death, Wenceslas was canonized as a saint due to his martyr's death, as well as several purported miracles that occurred after his death. Revered for his kindness to the poor, he is the patron saint of the Czech people and the Czech Republic. This Christmas carol tells the story of a king and his page on a journey as they brave the harsh winter weather. One night on the feast day of St. Stephen, they observe a poor man collecting wood. Wenceslas asks his page to find out where the poor man lives and to gather meat, drink, and firewood so that they can bring it to his home. During the journey, the page is about to give up with the struggle against the cold weather. But Wenceslas tells his page to follow in his footsteps. Miraculously, as the page steps into the king's footprints, he feels the warmth of the king's generosity emanating in the snow and is able to go on. Now, although it doesn't reflect the inclusive language of today, this traditional Christmas carol has a message of kindness generosity, and giving to those less fortunate than ourselves. And so may we always strive to emulate the good king's example, not only on Christmas, but every day. The lyrics to this carol will appear on the slides here in the sanctuary, and we will remain seated for this hymn.
So friends, at this time, let us come together in prayer to reflect on and share the yearnings, the struggles and the joys of our lives. And if you have any blessings or concerns that you would like to share with us this week, if you're here in the sanctuary, Isabel is gonna kindly come around with a handheld mic and you're welcome to share a joy or concern in that. For those on Zoom, you're welcome to type something into the comments and I will share that on your behalf. Thanks, Isabel, for your help. I have a number of prayer uh, requests and concerns to share. Uh, the first, of course, we continue our prayers for Linda and Greg King, for Sarah King, Kingsley Leo and Ava Fondong on the death of their father, grandfather and Opa, Ike Tilma. We sent a prayerful support out last week and Ike's life will be celebrated in Peterborough on January the 7th. And we send our love and prayer to all of his family and friends at this time. I'm also very sad to share the news that Bob Wynn passed away last Thursday evening. Uh, we are holding Barb and their family in our prayers at this time, and we will be sharing funeral details in the coming days via a prayerful support email. But please hold Barb and family in your prayers. Laura Ford has been in hospital, but I'm pleased to report that she is out of the ICU and has been moved to a, a regular room, and we just continue praying for her continued recovery. And finally, uh, for, for me that was shared this week, we were remembering uh, the Coleman Tiffin family as Crystal's grandmother, Mary Coleman, is palliative. Uh, they were so hopeful that she would make it to Christmas with them, and she did, uh, but she is in her final days, and they're taking things hour by hour at this point. And so we lift them up in our prayers this week as well. Are there any others who would like to share a joy or concern this day? Just if you would raise your hand if you're with us in the sanctuary and Isabel will happily come to you. I'm happy to uh, It's on. I'm happy to say that um, my father's um, girlfriend, Doris Lemon, actually made it home for Christmas um, while she's still um, in a bed. Um, she's getting um, care, but she is no longer in the hospital, which is a blessing. Thank you. Oh, wonderful. Thanks for sharing that, Sarah. Anyone else? Oh, yes. Uh, my grandson, James Cartmel, uh, fractured his femur on Friday night, so he is now home again with a, a body cast, basically. And so the next six weeks are going to be pretty tough, but anyway, they, they're home and in good spirits at this point. Thanks so much, Bert. We'll be keeping him in our prayers and all of you. That's a lot. Anyone else this morning have anything they'd like to share? That was a ski accident there, buddy. No? No way. No, oh, my God. Uh, yeah, we've um, had a death in our family, too. Uh, Kurt and Anita Whitehurt were friends of ours for the longest time. Anita died five years ago of uh, ovarian cancer. And now Kurt has finally passed away, too. So leaving uh, Carmen and uh, Marlon on their own at a young age, like they're only 35, and lost both parents now. So let's pray for them. Thank you. Thank you. We'll certainly be holding everyone in prayer. Thank you. Let us pray. Holy One, we gather before you in prayer, celebrating your presence and your light in our lives and in the world. The old year has ended and a new one lies before us, a new year full of promise, hope and potential. As we enter into this new year, 
We pray that your grace will be upon all nations, all peoples, and all of creation, leading us in love, peace, and joy. We pray that your guidance and wisdom will lead us into this new year and encourage us to live in peace, respect, and curiosity with one another, and that your spirit will enliven us as we grow, learn, and work together. In the midst of our holiday celebrations, we hold before you those who suffer alone this day, those who ache with pain or hunger, those who tremble in fear or anxiety, those who feel empty and unfulfilled, and those who feel unloved and unwanted. We pray for all who are touched by conflict and war. We hold before you all who live in refugee camps, all who live in foreign lands, and all who are homeless and struggling on the streets. May your presence and your peace surround all who are in need. We pray for particular people, Holy One. Each of us knows someone who is ill, someone who is grieving, someone who has lost hope, someone struggling with unemployment, someone who is alone. May they feel your comforting presence and know the depth of your love, and may we all reach out in small but meaningful ways to deepen relationships and community. Fill us with your grace and strength and comfort and hear us as we lift our joys and concerns to you in the silence of our hearts. All this we pray in the name of your beloved child who came to us all those years ago and lives among us still today. Amen. Well, as we move towards our closing hymn this morning, I have another story. Like many spirituals and folk songs, the origin of Go Tell It on the Mountain is not fully known. It is believed that the song likely dates back to the mid-19th century, but spirituals were passed from plantation to plantation orally, disseminating the songs without sheet music, let alone recordings, which makes them difficult to date accurately. The person responsible for making a Christmas classic out of Go Tell It on the Mountain is a Nashville-born uh, collector of spirituals named John Wesley Work Jr. He combined his passions for history and music into his search for African-American spirituals with the help of his brother, Frederick Jerome Work, and his wife, Agnes Haynes. He compiled their findings and published them in publications in 1901 and in 1907, which featured the first publication of Go Tell It on the Mountain. In 1963, Folk trio Peter, Paul, and Mary rewrote the song, releasing it as Tell It on the Mountain. Now, protest song was nothing new to Peter, Paul, and Mary, and Tell It on the Mountain is no exception. This version eliminates the, the nativity from the lyrics, replacing it with an excerpt from Moses in Exodus, Let My People Go, a thinly veiled comment on the civil rights movement of the early 60s. And it's interesting to note the way that Peter, Paul, and Mary took a spiritual, a song from a genre rich with African-American history in cultural resistance and inner strength. They reworked the lyrics, adapting it into a song in solidarity with the mid-20th century struggle for civil rights. 
Our closing hymn this morning is found in Voices United, number 43. We will sing, Go, Tell It on the Mountain. Friends, our worship is coming to an end. And as we move from this season of Christmas into the season of Epiphany in the days ahead, may we remember that the light now burns in each of us. And so go as light bearers to the world, loving as Jesus loved. And as we go forth into this new year, may the Holy One be thou a bright light before us, a guiding star above us, a smooth path below us, a kindly shepherd behind us, today, tonight, forever. Thanks be to God. Amen.